everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all this is something I've been meaning to film for a really long time because I have lots of videos where I've talked about everything from bondage to handcuffs to hair pulling and I think this conversation is something that's really important to have just as an overall thing to keep in mind with lots of different types of BDSM play because I was having a conversation with somebody on Patreon earlier this week and they asked me about what areas of the body are best to use for impact play and which areas are best left being avoided and that really got me thinking and I think the best thing to do is to literally just go head to toe, talk about every different little part of the body and tell you guys which parts are better to avoid, which parts are fair game, which ones are the most pleasurable and which ones are maybe more suited for punishment. So this is gonna be a really big conversation. Impact play is going to be part of this video, but I'm going to be going way beyond that and talking about a lot of different types of BDSM as well, in particular for maybe some of those more unusual areas that you wouldn't necessarily think of incorporating into your kink scene. Now, before we get into this conversation, I just want to bring up really quickly just a little visual guide that you guys have probably seen floating around on the internet if you have done any research about this at all. And I do think this is a fairly good guide. I do disagree with it, or I want to add some nuance to a couple of the points here, but I just want to offer this up because with the way that YouTube is currently, um, I can't really <laughs> show you guys stuff on uh, my own body without risking my whole channel just getting yeeted off of YouTube. So we are going to be using some other visual aids, some like anatomy diagrams, things like that, which I think will be really helpful because even on my own body, I can't really show you guys in detail like where muscles are or joints or nerves, things like that. So I think that will be helpful for all of you. And uh, if you were hoping to see me naked in this video, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm sure you'll leave a comment down below to let me know about how disappointed you are. So I think the best place to start is just at the beginning, up the top with the head and the face. When it comes to BDSM, most people don't really think about the face or the head at all. They're just like, oh, that just is clearly going to be off limits because of course you have the ears, you have the eyes, you have the nose, you have all these different mucous membranes, like your brain, obviously. Like you probably don't really wanna be messing with that too much, right? Like accidentally causing blindness or deafness by striking somebody on the eyes, the ears, that would be probably a bad thing to do. However, I do know some people that choose to engage in play involving the face and the head. For example, you can have micro bondage on the head. There are people who do wax play, you know, more aiming for the cheeks or the forehead, you know, not directly pouring it into the ear canal or up the nose, things like that. I also know people who do needles on the face too. And all of those things generally go in what is known as risk aware consensual kink. So it's elevated risk. It's not necessarily something that's for somebody brand new to BDSM, but it is a possibility. I think the main type of play to think about here when it comes to creating a sensation of pain would be hair pulling. And I have a whole other video where I have discussed that before, which I think you should check out because hair pulling, once you know the right technique to do it, it's actually a lot harder to mess up and do wrong than you might think that it is. However, if you do it incorrectly, it's <laughs> quite easy to like cause permanent cervical spine damage. So, you know, you wanna make sure you're learning the correct technique. Now, during this conversation, and especially here and a couple other parts of the body, I'm going to be using the term safely as opposed to safe. You can make things more safe in BDSM, but most things you cannot make 100% foolproof, no risk guaranteed safe because there are just simply risk factors that are inherently associated with different types of play or different parts of the body that you cannot get rid of no matter how well you do something. So just keep that in mind. This conversation is not about telling you guys how to 100% avoid all problems in BDSM. This is more of a guide to show you some of the different parts of the body and the relative level of risk of 
engaging in each one if you choose to do so. Now going down from the head, the next part is everybody's favorite, the neck. Ah, there's collars, you might even do like some needles if you're like a really hardcore edge player, but the absolute number one favorite for so many people is choking. Choking is the number one thing I get asked about all of the time is how can I choke my girlfriend? How can I choke my boyfriend until he passes out? And uh, I don't want to disappoint anybody for the second time in this video, but uh, I do not have the ability to teach you how to do choking using best practice methods in a two minute segment of a video. Choking is a thing that a lot of people are really into. It is an elevated level of risk if you choose to engage in it. However, there are lots and lots of really great educators that you can learn from ideally in person that will demonstrate to you what we know as the safer methods for choosing to engage in choking. It's not something that I recommend to a beginner. It's not something that I recommend to somebody who's new to BDSM at all, but it is something you can learn about. And if you want to do this, I really want to encourage you to seek out that further education so you know what is going to be best for yourself and your own body, as well as for your partners. Now going on from there, we have the chest. And I would really consider this area to be anything from like the clavicle to the bottom of the breast fold or to the end of the pectoral muscle. And this is a really interesting area for impact play because it's quite controversial. And basically what people say is that, oh, impact play on the chest may give you an increased risk of breast cancer. And there's a great post from Shay of Shay and Stefanos who have talked about a lot on this channel, who is an ER nurse, has actually looked into the research on this. And to give you all some more context for that, essentially people are extrapolating from research that was done on people who had trauma in the breast or in the pectoral muscle area from seatbelt injury and car crashes. And that may or may not be applicable to BDSM activities. So I just wanna get that out there. I will link to that post down below if you want to have more details about that. So you may choose to not engage in impact play because of the fact there is some research that may be correlated to BDSM, but if you are open to using the chest area for kink play, it actually offers a lot of possibilities. Depending on your individual anatomy, you might be able to do things like caning or flogging, maybe using a wooden spoon, for example. You not only have the tissue in the area as well, but the nipples, so you could do things like clamps or clips is a really good spot for temperature play. And it's also really good if you like having impact play where you're facing your partner, you can have that eye to eye connection. There's actually something that a lot of people in the men's leather community like to do where I think it's called like just giving them the business where they literally just like are just punching a guy in the chest like over and over and over again, like really, really close range and like making really intense eye contact, which I love. I am so glad that that's a thing because that's totally my energy, but there's lots of possibilities if you want to incorporate the chest muscle. Now you do need to be aware of the rib cage underneath and as well, you want to be aware of the sternum too. You can do a sternal rub, which uh, is incredibly painful even for the most hardcore masochist. If you're somebody who's maybe more like me and you don't have a lot of um, adequate tissue, I guess I would say you probably want to avoid hitting directly in the middle of the chest, but with somebody who has more tissue in that area, there's definitely more possibilities for maybe rather than just using kind of down the line of the muscles, but between them as well, if that makes sense. So individual anatomy is going to come into a lot of this conversation because everybody has different bodies and we all have different sensations that we prefer and different parts of our body will respond to sensations differently. You might hate caning on your butt, but love it on your chest. So that is something to keep in mind too. All right, now moving down from there, we have basically everything from like the ribs down to the hip bone. So the stomach and the ribs, that whole area. Now, if you have seen my 50 Shades of Grey review, you know that I have a lot <laughs> of opinions about impact play on this part of the body. I, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, a lot of people who are vanilla that have never done BDSM before think this is like 
the sexiest place to do a flogging and it blows my mind. Uh, your torso has a lot of organs in it, a lot of very soft, squishy organs, and they are generally not a fan of being bruised. <laughs> so uh, if you value your squishy internal organs, the stomach is not really the best place to do heavy impact play. Also, the floating ribs getting those fractured, getting those broken, also not a super fun time. The hip bones, especially for somebody who is at a lower like body fat percentage, if you have more protruding hip bones, those are also really uncomfortable to get hit. So uh, generally the stomach, this whole area, not a great location for impact play. That doesn't mean you can't do pain here, for example. Maybe you do like some clamps, you do a zipper, you do wax play, you do sensation play, you get out the nice fur flogger instead of the buffalo hide flogger. You can definitely do things on this part of the body, but I would advise you avoid purposely causing bruising and trauma in this area unless you just really like messing with your internal organs for some reason. And of course, directly south from the hip bones would be the genitals. Now the genitals are probably very polarizing for a lot of people when it comes to BDSM play. Some people love genital torture. Some people love having their genitalia messed with. Some people hate it. No way, leave that shit alone. I do not want you touching me there. If you do want to engage in pain play on your genitals, there's actually a lot of possibilities though. There's CBT, there's sounding, there's click clamps, there's pumps. You can do needles on the genitalia as well. You can do pussy spanking or punching. You can use electro sex toys. Like they have invented a lot of very specific toys to use just around the genitalia. And if you do have that specialized equipment, it can open up a lot of possibilities for using this as something for impact play. I've even seen really little teeny tiny floggers just for flogging people in the balls. So it is a possibility and I wouldn't write off using the genitals if you just have assumed to this point that you could never touch them with anything pain related because you never know, it might be your next favorite thing. Now from there, we're going more into the legs, which I think we need to break up into a couple of different sections. So first I wanna do everything from the bottom of the hips down to the ankles. And this offers a lot of variety with play. Now there are joints in the area. Generally you want to avoid joints. If I haven't mentioned that up to this point, joints are generally a no-go. So avoid the kneecaps probably good to not destroy somebody's patella during BDSM play. And if you're on your knees, I would advise that you wear some knee covers, some knee pads if you have them. However, the front of the legs on the quadriceps, that is a great place for impact play. You can do spanking on them, you can use canes, floggers. I personally find that the front of the thighs can be very intense in no small part because like the chest, it allows you to do impact play where you're facing your partner and that can really increase the intensity from a mental and emotional perspective. The femur bone is the strongest bone in the body. So if you're looking for a place that can take a lot of impact play, depending on again, individual anatomy, the quads might be a good location for that. Again, you wanna avoid the knees. If you go too far up, you might accidentally hit the genitals or the bottom of the hip bones. Now, when you go past the knees, you have the shins. And the shins, generally pretty thin skin, thin tissue, not a lot of covering. I wouldn't advise direct impact play on this area. I know some people that love bondage on their shins because it produces a really, really intense sensation for them. But generally, I wouldn't want to strike in this area directly because it doesn't feel good. It's gonna be very, very thin tissue, and then directly underneath that is bone. So you probably want to avoid hitting there. Now, after that, you have the ankles and the feet. Again, the feet, the toes, lots of small bones. The ankle is a joint that can be quite sensitive. However, the foot itself is not entirely off limits. There's an entire area of play called bastinando, which is derived from a form of torture where one would cane the soles of somebody else's feet as a punishment. So you can cane somebody on the feet. You might wanna do some tickle torture perhaps. If you have more small implements, maybe like the bottom, of a wooden spoon, for example, that could be something you might wanna use on the feet as well because the heel actually has some pretty thick tissue on it. So it can take some impact play, it can take some pain. However, 
it's definitely going to immobilize you to some degree, especially if you get a lot of bruising or it becomes very uncomfortable. So keep that in mind if mobility is important to you, if you wanna be able to be on your feet the next day. If you go too hard on the feet, you might be limiting yourself the next day in terms of what feels comfortable to walk on. And walking around on tiptoes around the office might be kind of awkward, so keep that in mind as well. Now going up the back side of the legs, we have the calves and the back of the knees. Now the calves, like the chest, is a pretty controversial area when it comes to impact play in BDSM. For some reason, people have gotten the idea that impact play on the calves puts you at risk for deep vein thrombosis or DVT. I'm not a nurse, I'm not a medical professional, so I'm not going to explain what that is. But Shay, once again, has an amazing blog post that you will see down in the description box below that explains why that doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, especially specifically on the calves. If you are worried about blood clotting issues, that is more going to come from immobility after play than from the play itself. So try to set yourself up so you have some kind of movement in your day, like walking, even just around the house, to help make sure that your blood is continuing to flow, to help make sure that you're not putting yourself at higher risk for DVT, like you might if you're, for example, on a long haul flight. But with that being said, you can use the calves for impact play. There is definitely sufficient tissue there on the back side to use for pain play for things like caning, paddles, various other instruments. However, I don't know anybody that has like the calves as specifically their favorite area for impact play. I don't know anybody that's like, ah, oh, I love being hit on my calves. So if you do want to engage in pain play on the calves, I would maybe think about this as a good spot to look to for somebody who's either a really, really heavy pain bottom or if you want to do punishment pain play, if you do pain for pleasure on other parts of the body, for example, you know, spanking on the butt, let's say. So that can be a good use for the calves. I don't think it's totally off limits, but it's also not anybody's favorite. You generally want to avoid the backside of the knees because again, joint, want to avoid joints, not gonna mess with your knees, you wanna be able to stay mobile. Going up the leg, we have the back of the thigh or the hamstrings. And like the quadriceps on the opposite side, there is generally a lot of tissue here. There is generally a lot of room to use larger toys if that's what you want to do. I know a lot of people where the thighs are their favorite location for impact play. This is like the classic spot for caning. You can use paddles, you can use whips. It's generally a pretty good place to go to if you're not really sure where to start with doing impact play. Now going up from there, you guessed it, you have the butt. And I'm also gonna be talking about the inner thighs in this portion of the video as well. So the butt I think is the spot on the body that I'd recommend for somebody who's totally new to impact play that doesn't really know where to start because uh, you can probably identify where the butt is. It's literally your body's like tissue cushion, if you will. There's usually a significant fat or muscle tissue in that area, even for people who are relatively skinny and don't necessarily have a lot of covering on other parts of their body. And outside of avoiding the sacrum and avoiding the hip bones, it's a lot harder to get it wrong than it is, for example, on the chest or even on the back, which we will talk about next. So on the butt, there's lots and lots of area for impact play. Again, you can do canes, you can do floggers, you can do whips, basically anything you really want. There's just a lot of really good tissue there that you can work with. Now with the inner thighs, that can also be a possibility as well. I find a lot of people are very sensitive on their inner thighs. So again, if you're dealing with a heavy masochist, if you wanna go maybe in a more sexual direction, the inner thighs could be a good location. And you do wanna be aware of the femoral artery that is closer to the inner part of the thighs. However, unless you're like fucking stabbing needles <laughs> into somebody, it's pretty unusual that you would really have any issues with like directly impacting the femoral artery. I've never heard of anything before in my entire time in the BDSM community, but it can increase sensation. It can make you more sensitive in that area and make it uncomfortable. And again, increased risk of bruising because there is so much more blood flowing through that location. Now, just a little side note here. I wanna talk about kind of the butt and everything down to like the kneecaps as sort of one unit together because if you are really interested in like barehanded spanking, for example, basically everything from like the top part of the butt down to the kneecaps is like 
the sweet spot. That's really the area that you want to aim for. And if you are doing spanking, I would think about it as sort of three different parts. We have sort of the meat of the butt, you have the gluteal fold, and then you have the thighs underneath that. And you generally want to mix the sensations between those ones because most people find either the butt or the gluteal fold to be more pleasurable, whereas the lower parts of the thighs tend to be a little bit more sensitive. And actually, especially if you concentrate on the gluteal fold area, a lot of people find that stimulates their genitals. And if you're going in a more sexual direction with your play, aiming for that area in particular can produce some pretty nice results. And I know a few people that have orgasmed just from impact play, just from people spanking them on the gluteal fold area, which I think is pretty cool. So if you want that, if you're looking for that magical sweet spot, the gluteal fold may be the place for you to go. Now, if you wanna take things maybe to the next level, you might want to think about the back. And something I haven't mentioned here already is like how you hear people say, oh, are you, a stingy pain bottom or a thuddy pain bottom. You will also hear people say, oh, are you a back or a butt bottom? Like which one do you prefer? And people do generally have a preference between the two. I really like the back because it offers a lot of real estate space, right? Now you have to be careful with that real estate though, because it's not like the whole back <laughs> is fair game, right? You generally want to be going for the rhomboids, the trapezius, even maybe getting into the delt area on the back of the shoulders a little bit, all the way maybe to like the upper part of the lat muscles. You wanna avoid the spine in the middle, which uh, hopefully makes sense why you would want to avoid the spine all the way down to the tailbone and the sacrum area, the back part of the top of the hip bones. If you're going sort of below the top of the lat muscles, kind of sort of the mid back down to the hips, then you end up risking the back of the floating ribs, you risk hitting the kidneys and uh, pissing blood is not fun. So I'd recommend not hitting the kidneys. And this is generally why I don't recommend the back as a beginner area for kink play because there's so much you gotta keep in mind between the spine and the kidneys and the hip bones and everything else. So I would definitely not recommend starting on the back if you're brand new to using an implement because while there is a lot of real estate in that area, it can also be more dangerous if you do happen to make a mistake. So when you gain more proficiency with whatever tools you're using, or if you're using something that's really precise, maybe like a crop, it's a little bit easier to make sure you are keeping all of the correct areas in mind that you do want to aim for on purpose because uh, I have seen more than my fair share of people that just don't realize that they shouldn't be flogging the kidneys and then their partner is like, oh no, I'm pissing blood on FetLife. And they're like, what do I do? What happened? What did we do wrong? And it's like, well, it's because you flogged your fucking kidneys for like 30 minutes. So that is what happens. So I am teaching you this now so you don't accidentally make that mistake and cause your partner some unintentional damage. So the back can be great. A lot of people really enjoy the back, especially if they have more developed muscles in the back. But if you are not really aware of exactly where to hit, it can get in some pretty dangerous territory. And now the very last area I want to discuss would be basically the whole arms and the hands because not a lot of people really think about impact play in this area. However, there are some spots that do have some more tissue that you can use. For example, onto the shoulders, into the bicep muscle. Those parts of the body do have more tissue for maybe more precise impact play. Again, things like crops, for example. However, there's just a lot of literally moving parts around here, right? There's lots of joints, there's the elbow, there's the wrist, lots of tiny small bones in the hands you probably want to avoid crushing. So I would consider this to be a more advanced location for impact play as well. Maybe if you're doing something with like punishment or if you're doing something maybe on the chest or the back and you wanna maybe expand your real estate a little bit, going onto the arms might be a little bit of a fun expected alternative beyond just, oh, you know, we're doing something on the butt we're doing something on the thighs, we're doing something on the chest, right? So that could be a good tool for that purpose. I know people that use the arms for sensation play, knife play, needles, wax play, rope bondage. You can definitely do things on the arms, but traditional impact play is not generally one of them. So that is basically everything that I wanted to share with you guys today about impact play and BDSM play on different parts of the body. I guess just as a quick summary to what we learned here today, you want to generally aim for parts of the body that have more significant amounts of tissue, places like 
the butt, the thighs, the back, the chest, etc. You want to avoid parts of the body that don't have sufficient tissue covering, have sensitive organs, or are parts of joints because damaging those would generally be a bad thing to do, especially on accident. However, even with that in mind, there are lots of alternatives for different parts of the body that are maybe unusual that you didn't fully consider when it comes to incorporating a total body experience in a BDSM scene or in BDSM play. And that is really everything I have to share with you guys today. Again, additional resources and references will be down in the description box below. I would love to hear from you. What is your favorite part of the body for BDSM play? Is there anything that I missed here? Anything that you have further questions about? You can go ahead and leave that down in the comment section below. So if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more from me, please do subscribe and make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related subjects. And if you really want to support my channel, the best way you can do that is through Patreon. Link to that is down in the description box below. That is what makes this channel and all of these videos possible. And in return, I get to offer you guys some exclusive bonus rewards, things like extra videos, a Discord chat, and one-on-one -on -one chats as well. If you haven't already, please go ahead and check that out. Again, link is down below in the description box. If you already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the app absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.